If no question, then let's move forward. So how can we increase the speed of the clock, uh, of the uh, calculation? We can use so-called pipelining. You also, you usually have some recombina uh, combinational uh, logic between the register. So you need to clock them, right? For example, when clock goes up, copy everything to here, do addition, absolute log, and then the result, the previous result go out already, and you won't pass through here, right? So the delay is what? What's the regular delay here? What's the delay? Let me give you the delay. It's clock time from clock to Q. You copy from A to here. The time is clock to Q plus the time to do the addition plus the time to do the absolute value plus the time to do the log. And then one more, set up time for this register. And then you can have another clock. Then you copy the answer to the next stage. And then I can do the another calculation. Is this okay? Any questions? Now, what we can do is do the so-called pipelining. We add a register in between, right? So what is the maximum clock I can use? I only do need to make sure it finished the transfer and calculation in each stage before I go to the next clock. So again, clock to queue the delay from copying register to the uh, combinational logic. And to copy it out, I still need to the set up time. It has to be ready for the next clock. But in between, it's only the maximum of this three. Add the absolute value and log, right? Because they are in different sandwich by different register. Although after each time, I only finish the adder or uh, uh, absolute value, but after you go full free crop, I will finish everything. So I only need to find the maximum of them. If I partition it well, it means I can reduce the frequency, the, the period by three times almost. But I have not finished the calculation, right? So it looks like I don't gain anything. But the important thing is, if I'm going to process a lot of data, at crop period one, I only do one addition. Crop period two, it go to do the absolute value for the first pair. I start doing the addition for the second pair. Then once I fill up the pipeline, I'm doing free addition. I mean, I mean, I, I basically finish one throughput, one through addition, absolute and log in one crop, which is one third of the original time. Remember this crop period is only one third of the regular one. Okay, and that is how you do the pipeline. And by the way, just to let you know the out equals to log absolute value of A plus B, right? That is the function that is implemented. Uh, any questions? Okay, if no, right, then we can also use pipeline, use the latches. Okay, so uh, this latches is basically, uh, it's not here we use the uh, register, right? But here we use the latch. So how do we do it? It's still again that if this is zero, this is on, and then this is off, and then this is on, right? So that this one will only compute F when this is zero, okay? And here, you won't take this one. This one will go to the, this result will go to the next stage. And then and in another clock, when this becomes low, when this becomes low, right? This is zero. I mean, clock is zero, copra, copra is one, right? Then it will take this result and compute G. Right? So by doing this, you will be able to do two computation at the same time. I mean, many computation at the same time. Okay, and this is, but the problem is if there's cross overlap, 
then there will be racing condition because when both of these turn on, originally I just want to compute this result based on G, but this one is too fast, it can affect my G, then I will lose control. Okay. Okay, so uh, just think about that. Uh, we are kind of done with the sequential logic, but now go to a more complicated one, timing issue. How do we time it so that you get the right result, right? Uh, this one is just uh, talking about the some synchronization that I want you to be aware of. You probably won't remember the name later, right? But you know that there's something like this. When people talk about it, you, you, you ring the bell. Well, first of all, what we have been using is synchronized, synchronous interconnect. Basically, you share the same clock. It's just like orchestra. The conductor do the thing and then everyone play according to the clock, right? And we use this register to gate all this computation. It's also possible sometimes you try to talk to the others. Uh, some thing has a different timing. One has clock one, another has clock two. Then it means clock one in particular, C1 may be faster than C2. You may keep putting more data uh, than C2 can accept. You need to do something, right? One of the possibility is to add this first in first out buffer. So you need to store that if it comes too fast, okay? Now, another possibility, this one, you still uh, have the same crop, still FA equal to FB, okay? But there is a phase difference. This is uh, very common because maybe between the chip, right? You might not be sharing the same crop. You have the same frequency, but then there's a delay from one part to another, then you will need to have some control to recover, okay? And the best is the asynchronous interconnect. You don't need clock. But if you don't have clock, it means you need to talk to each other. So you always need to do handshaking. Once you are done, you will say, I'm done, right? Can acknowledge, can I, I got your data. Can you send me something else? So this also happened in the uh, digital design. And this is very common, of course, in the network, right? Because in the network, you cannot have a common crop. It's almost impossible. A lot of delay, right? But you always use this protocol, uh, a knowledge request. And then I just based on this, just like human being. Okay, I, I got your letter. I got your assignment. Like how I talk to you, you download the assignment, you did, uh, do it, you upload, then I know that you get it, I grade it, I send it back, I tell you that it's done, and you correct it or you study. We are all asynchronous because there's no someone to add August to our, say, uh, oh, today uh, at this minute, right, the professor is going to uh, post the assignment and you need to do the assignment in the next minute and then one minute later you upload. Otherwise, if you miss something, we are not going to tell you, we're not going to talk to each other. So there are four types of scenario, okay? Any questions? Okay, so let's talk about the ideal, the timing, right? What is the period that we can have? We kind of talked about that earlier already here. This one, right? What is the period that maximum crop period or minimum crop period that I can have for this uh, circuit, right? I copy the data to here and then you compute it. And then in the next crop, I want to copy the result to the next stage and I copy the new, new input to here and you compute it, right? So what is the fastest way I can crop it so that it does not corrupt the data, right? Then of course, the first thing is, TCQ, right? I need to take you, you need to give me some time to copy from this register from D to Q. And then, well, it depends how fast your logic works, right? And then 
I need to be there for the setup time because for the next crop to come up, I need to be set up already. Otherwise, you might not be able to copy the data from D to Q. Remember all those are free for, right, example. Is this okay? Any questions? So this is one criteria. Another criteria is T hold. How long should I hold my data, right? So if you copy, if I have a data here, let's say uh, I, if this is, uh, this one requests a T-hole, right? Then your T-hole should not request too long. You should not request me to, oh, you need to stay for one second. That is too long, right? Your T-hole should be smaller than the T-contamination delay of the register, and the, uh, let's use the crop, the symbol from the test book. The crop to Q contamination delay and the logic contamination delay, right? T hole is given by the register. The one who designed the register tell us what the T hole has to be. Remember this register we just discussed? If someone used this register, they will tell us that T hole is T11 overlap, for example, one nanosecond. If that is the case, you better to have, you need to make your circuit so that your contamination delay between this combinational logic plus the T logic CD is longer than that. Right? This is the time for the next data in to reach out to and corrupt B of out to. So when your clock goes up, you say I have a T hole. So the T hole better smaller than that the requirement. If the T hole is 10 nanosecond, and when it goes up, you start copy D to Q, but then you need to 10 nanoseconds, but this data just take five nanoseconds to reach here. You already contaminated this data. Then you have a problem. Is this clear? This is very important. If you understand this later will be easier. Any questions? Okay, so remember this is the period. Period has to larger than this, this limited frequency. At the same time, your T hole cannot be too long, right? The requirement, okay? Now the problem is this, even we don't have buffer, buffer there will be clock skew. Look at this two, this combinational logic and with these two registers, the clock from, from, run from left to right. There's wire, there's capacitor, there's a resistor. TK1 clock one can arrive earlier than T clock two. You plot the time diagram, there's a shift. It's so skewed. This is not overlap. This is not talking about the clock and clock bar. You just shift it. You take a longer time to arrive here. Okay? Just because of the tokens, the, the path is different. Of course, it arrived later. And then what happened to our requirement? What should be the value of T? How should we do that? Now, the good thing about this one is that because the clock arrive later, right? So it basically saying that I can have a shorter T because in the past they arrive at the same time and have certain T. But now you arrive later, then I can make my period shorter because you are later anyway, right? I have more time for it to play with. It's just basically T plus delta, which is the skew, right? Has to be larger than, again, T clock to Q, right? T logic, and then T setup. 
And because of this, the T has to be larger T cot to Q plus T logic plus T setup minus delta. So you in case can increase the frequency. So if you have a clock skew in this way, it's good for you. You can clock, you can make a higher frequency uh, circuit. Even your combinational logic is low. Is this okay? For example, if skew for a very long time, then you just, well, even it take long time to compute, you can still reach the next edge of the clock. If your logic always go from left to right, that is the good thing about cross skew. Okay. But however, right, the, the, the nature is fair. How about T hole? We want the T hole to be large in the sense that you relax the requirement of this one because this is required by someone, right? This time, because you actually have arrive later, then it has more chance to contaminate my data, the next data, because I'm the old data is here, waiting to be copied, right? You need to hold for a while, but because this one come later, so this one need to hold for longer time. Then it means this one will have more chance to affect it. So because of this, the T hole will be less than T clock to Q, contamination delay plus T log, T logic, contamination delay minus delta. Or in other words, delta needs to be less than T clock to Q, contamination delay, T logic, contamination delay, minus t hole okay and this is worse right you your delta cannot be too large because once it's too large you might need a, might not be able to meet this criteria and as a result your circuit will fail is this okay What if the clock goes in the other way, right? Here, although, uh, am I showing the same circuit? Maybe it's not that good to show the same circuit, but let's say the clock is going to the other way. I probably should copy another figure, but doesn't matter. The point is the clock goes to the next one earlier. So actually this is the flow of the clock. Okay, so it arrived the second clock first and then the first clock, okay? So here, Delta is smaller than zero, okay? So we still have the same equation. We still have the same equation. But then this time it's like this, the same equation, right? T set up plus T clock to Q plus T logic minus delta. But it's negative, so this frequency has to reduce. It's just because this one, uh, this clock two arrived earlier than clock one. So I have less time to do my computation. Okay. That is very uh, reasonable, right? And then same for T hole. It's the same equation as last time, clock two Q, contamination delay plus logic, contamination delay minus delta. Same equation. But because it's negative, so this becomes uh, positive, better, right? Because this whole thing is positive. You allow the register to have more, uh, uh, I mean, more to, 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 the, to be more lousy. So it is, uh, would request larger, uh, so it uh, allow you to, it can request a larger uh, whole time. You can use a register with larger T hole, right? Otherwise, you need to buy a more expensive register for that. 
Is this okay? Now, but the point is, uh, it's not that simple. If that simple life is easy, right? We don't need engineer. The point is, you always have some cycle that a positive skew, in this case, the clock goes from, from left to right, and the data also go from left to right. But then you also have data going back as a feedback. And then this is negative skew, right? Don't know. You cannot apply any of them. So you always need the worst case analysis for this. You always need the worst case analysis. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, I think it's time's up. I will talk about the last slide next.